Hello and welcome to the SIFO webinar question and answers on this space. Uh, I'm very glad that we have today with us uh, Nathan Bimba and uh, Evan Yorogan. And uh, you can see them there. I'm Irina Kuchma and unfortunately my camera doesn't work so you can't see me. And uh, we are very glad to see you today. And uh, I have uh, just a couple of introductory slides. And then uh, the rest of the webinar is actually for you to ask uh, any questions uh, you might have. And please use the text chat for that. In case uh, the text chat doesn't work for you, you can also email me your questions. Uh, and uh, I'll make sure that we answer them. And uh, I'll also share recording and slides with you after this webinar. Uh, so before the webinar, we released uh, a checklist. And uh, it's actually a second edition of the checklist uh, based off a uh, series of webinars we did last year. And uh, we had uh, Nathan. Uh, then we had uh, Hilton Gibson, uh, who unfortunately passed away, and also Evan's colleague, uh, Felix. And uh, for those who are new to this space, uh, I guess uh, this expert tips and uh, useful resources uh, is something to check. And uh, for the second, portion uh, of the checklist, we updated information about software versions because we had webinars last year. So by now, there is a newer DSpace version, uh, current uh, stable release is DSpace 6.2. And uh, the checklist uh, has uh, software updates plus uh, a couple of new chapters. And uh, I'd like to start stressing that uh, uh, it's really recommended to use uh, the latest stable software version. And uh, Nathan uh, wrote very good recommendations how to upgrade from DSpace 5 to DSpace 6. And uh, there is a URL here, and that's how it looks on Zenodo. So for those of you who are still uh, on this space 5 and would like to upgrade to this space 6, uh, uh, please check his useful notes. And then uh, Nathan also wrote uh, a very good uh, paper on uh, upgrading this space uh, uh, repository at uh, University of Zambia. So also for those of you who are interested, I recommend you to have a look. So now about the checklist. Uh, it has a set of questions and answers, like for example, whether you enable the handle service, and if not, how to do this. Uh, do you have backup restore procedures and policies for disaster recovery? Have you enabled a PMH server? How to improve discoverability through search engines? Uh, uh, how to track uh, and analyze repository statistics, uh, web traffic, uh, how to use Altmetrics plugins. Um, um, then uh, whether the repository is uh, mobile phone friendly, uh, whether there is an open access repository policy, uh, whether the repository allows depositors to register with their ORCID IDs. And then uh, uh, there is also a section on um, open peer review model for repositories. And that's an interesting development because uh, for now, repositories are not really interactive. There are records there, uh, but uh, there is no feedback conversations going on around the records. And this open peer review model is an attempt to provide post-publication peer review on uh, repository items. And um, uh, this model was launched uh, last year, and it has been tested uh, by repositories in Spain. 
and if you're interested in this, I do recommend you to have a look. And then uh, uh, I've also added a section about next generation repositories because uh, a uh, uh, couple of days ago a core confederation of open access repositories uh, released a report uh, behaviors and technical recommendations on uh, the core next generation repositories working group and uh, highlights uh, how repositories of, I don't know, the future or next version of repositories might look like. And um, I think it's an interesting document to work with. Uh, as far as I heard, uh, there are some experiments in Japan now. They're going to use Invenio software to build this next generation repositories. And we're also in discussion with uh, uh, the space uh, developers uh, how to implement some of these recommendations in this space. But of course, that's something for, for the coming years. It doesn't exist yet uh, in this space software code. Uh, and then uh, for today, uh, we received uh, three sets of questions. And I suggest that we start answering them. Um, uh, I guess if you need some clarifications, uh, Mason and Evan, you can ask. Uh, because I, I'm also not sure whether we have people who asked the question today with us. But let, let's see. So maybe I'll, I'll stop for now, and uh, I'll leave it to you, Mason and Evan, to respond. And uh, uh, please make sure that uh, if you have questions, you type them in a the text chat. OK, uh, thank you. Thank you, Irina. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, <clears throat> Uh, as regards to the question from Gilbert Nonga, um, I'll, I'll start with the first question and uh, uh, probably um, uh, Evans will also join in. Um, some display six features fail to run on Tomcat 8. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a good question, but at the moment it's just an open question to be good to know which features um, um, uh, Gilbert is alluding to. Uh, from my experience, the only issue we found with this space, which is uh, documented on the uh, Eurospace website, is um, is that this space six point uh, anyway, this space six going up uh, just does not work with uh, a certain version of Tomcat. Uh, it it doesn't behave very well. And this version is uh, Tomcat 8.0.32. Um, this is the version that is bundled with uh, uh, Ubuntu 16.04 LTS. So if you install Ubuntu together with uh, Tomcat, you get this version of Tomcat, which has been found to have a problem. So there are there is a lot of documentation on that which i also brought some on how to avoid that problem instead you install tomcat on its own so that's that's the only thing i can say on that one but without knowing which features fail um it will be difficult maybe maybe gilbert is around you can give us some more details on that one um yeah what, what do you think Ivan? Same here. Uh, I think there is nothing. Uh, the only feature uh, which you might not have mentioned is the uh, Mirage 2 theme. Uh, at the moment, uh, this space ships with uh, Mirage 1. And uh, that is when you're using XML UI. So, once you install, that's the, what would come out, out of the box. Uh, in a, most of 
when by the time it, it started, I think it started from uh, Dispatch 5. Uh, it was when Mirage 2 came up, and uh, but it does not come out of the box. You have to install. So that's the, I would say, the only thing, apart from what uh, Nathan has mentioned, uh, Mirage 2 also does not ship out of the box. So you have to install uh, on its own. Uh, Nathan has also shared, I think uh, it's part of his, his notes, uh, he has shared how to install Mirage 2 as part of this space 6 while, while you're installing together. Uh, you can do it separately. If you look at uh, the late uh, Gibson notes, you'll find that he has done them separately. But Nason has been able to do them together. So you can also take a look at those notes. Uh, if I get a link, I'll share it as we go on. Ah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I'll come <clears throat> coming to the second part of the question. Um, uh, view, but as I want to find out how I can customize this space application from novice to advanced. Um, um, it is, uh, yes, interesting. Um, uh, one, one thing I would like to say is um, uh, it's not that straightforward. Uh, you need to have certain uh, skills and certain in depth a little bit of understanding how web applications work and what sort of technologies uh, are involved. So to begin with, customization, it comes in two parts. Uh, there is customization, which will look at um, how your, 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 your display, you know, you own your display, which means uh, make it look like your own. That this is talking about more branding and uh, look and feel. This is where you change the logo, you change the colors. Um, that's one part of the customization. So for this part of customization, uh, you've got to know how, you, you've got to understand uh, cascading style sheets, which are, you know, in short term, they are called CSS. So if you understand that, and a bit of HTML, you should be able to uh, go into the code and 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 change again um, there are instructions on how to do that where to find uh, these bits of um, uh, the places that you need to change the other thing I would, I would i would also say is how you install this space also can uh, help you uh, in uh, uh, doing this work much much easily uh, this is where uh, it's recommended to use what they call overlay. This is where you separate your code, the code that you'll be changing a lot, uh, into into other folders which are called overlays. That way, then you don't need to change within the code, uh, this space code. The idea then is uh, when an upgrade comes, it doesn't affect your changes. You just uh, reapply your changes. Uh, when building this space, it's very clever. It will pick your changes as well. So there are places that uh, you need to change. With this space, uh, uh, or rather what Ivan has mentioned, Mirage 2, uh, simple customization based on look and feel. Uh, if there's just one file that you go in and just overread some of the um, uh, cascading style sheets commands that, uh, that are set. So it's a, it's a simple one. Unless you want to do a very drastic change, which you might not want to do, so it's very, very straightforward, and um, we have uh, some notes on that one as well. If anyone wants to, to know about that, we can do that. The second part of uh, customization is what I would call uh, the changing the behavior of this space to suit you. As you may appreciate, this space is uh, an open source tool that has been just created. Well, it works out of the box straight away, as Ivan has said. But at, at the same time, Ivan mentioned that there are certain bits that are not enabled uh, by default. So that you might need to change depending on your use cases of the, of the displays. So for this one, 
Again, we've, we've got two bits. There is what I'll call heavy customization. This is where you, uh, you extend the behavior of this space to something that is not already there. This requires a lot of uh, programming in Java, which means you, you write your Java code as add-ons. Uh, this space uh, uses a concept of add-on rather than is similar to plugins that you see in a lot of um, other frameworks. But for this, uh, a lot of us who work with this space, we don't do a lot of this bit. And most, uh, this bit is mostly done by um, the commuters themselves. Um, so what we normally do is, is only the moderate that part of the uh, changing behavior. This is where uh, you change certain configuration settings. For example, you might want to include certain fields uh, on the input form. And also, you might want to include um, uh, those fields to be displayed uh, on, the, on the user interface. So these are mostly changes that you do within uh, the configuration files. But also, you might need to change them through the, uh, uh, the, the, the actual um, code, which is, which is normally in uh, XML. So for this bit, what you need as, as a skill, you need to understand how this space code is structured when you install it. You need also to have a little bit of understanding of uh, extensible markup language, which is X, in short XML. And also you need to understand the uh, X, XSLT, which is the transformation uh, language used to transform um, the, uh, the XML into HTML. So this space doesn't by default um, give you HTML. It hasn't got HTML in it, but it, it creates HTML for display on the fly using the XSLT. So you need to understand those kind of things. As to really start going about that, uh, you, you need really to look at um, uh, what is out there in terms of uh, notes and uh, guidelines. Uh, the wiki that G G Hilton, the late Hilton used to maintain, which is still around, that um, uh, it's called Sun Scholar, has got quite a lot of resources on that. And uh, again, if, if you want to know more, um, I'm happy you know, just drop me an email. I, I, can, I, can, I can give you more information on that one. Thank you. Um, if you have any, any other questions, just please uh, type in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the in the space there. I'll be able to do that. Uh, Evans, you want to add anything? Yes, on, uh, <clears throat> on uh, customization, it's worth to note that uh, this space now uses a bootstrap, bootstrap for the, the, the framework. So you need to understand bootstrap, uh, some basics of it. You don't need to have a lot of uh, details, but uh, <clears throat> it's uh, worth to note that uh, there is a way you can take advantage of bootstrap to be able to uh, make changes. You know, you can do universal changes to uh, to your theme. There are themes you can get from Boots Watch. Uh, I'll put a link, and you'll see the kind of themes that are available there. And there's a way you can uh, you can put them together. You can use Boots Watch to get uh, to theme your repository just by getting the CSS. And using it on 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 your display. So I'll put a link on the chat just for you to understand what's the boost watch and how you can use it. You can see the themes that have already been done there. They are out of the box. So you can just pick the codes and be able to use it in your display. Thanks a lot, sir. and 
thanks Ian uh, for your message in the chat that uh, you're going to update uh, Hilton's wiki sometime next year. Well, that's very good to hear. And uh, our second set of questions uh, come from uh, Yolanta and uh, you can see them on the screen. So who would like to start? Would you like to start on this one? You can start and then I can contribute. <laughs> All right, okay. Um, uh, the question is, can you start a closed repository and later on make it open access? What are the settings that need to change? Could you give an example demo on this? Uh, duration of the webinar. In general, can you change this the setting at any point in development? Um, uh, I'll, I'll start with the middle one. Uh, uh, giving an example in this webinar, yeah, yeah, will be a tall order. Uh, I'll, I'll explain why, uh, where, where we need to do this. As for the other one, can you start a repository closed? and later make it open access. Um, uh, if, we, if we look at the history of this space and other mostly repositories, they came out of um, this desire to push open access. So by default, uh, this space is created as an open access repository. But that doesn't mean that you cannot close uh, the whole repository to your own institution or close parts of it, that's still possible. Uh, so the way to go about it probably will be two ways. One will be uh, set up your repository, but make it only you know, um, accessible or really viewable within your local area network. Uh, that means the repository is not um, on the public internet. That's the easiest, probably the easiest way, but then that will, uh, will only be viewable by people who are on your local area network. Um, the, uh, that, that way then when you want to make it open access, you can just um, uh, make it uh, viewable on the public internet and that, that would be it. The other bit, the other way you can do it is uh, if you still want your repository to be seen on the public internet, but, but also not allow people to view um, uh, the items that you've added in, then you've got to use uh, the built-in uh, permissions and authorization um, uh, methods. So by default, uh, this space comes with uh, two built-in users, user groups, uh, which is the administrator, which you always need. But there's also another 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 user group, which is called um, anonymous. So every access to this space uh, is is attached to that anonymous user. Then within the uh, authorizations uh, in the permissions area, uh, every uh, object within this space, uh, which means we are talking of uh, uh, the communities, the collections, the items, the bit streams, have got sets of um, uh, permissions that you can apply to and authorize people to do it. And one of the key permission is the read permission. Now, if you want uh, people to restrict access to any object in this space, all, what, all you need to do is remove the read access or the read permission from, from that object, the read permission for the anonymous group. So once you do that, then anybody who comes in, as long as they are not logged into the disk space, um, they will be presented with a login screen. So that's, that's the way you can do to, uh, to close it up. But then to open up, all what you do is you, you restore the, the read permissions back to the anonymous group. Um, if you've done it that way, 
then uh, the users that will need to access those objects will need to be registered within your D space. So again, registration can be done. They create a user profile within this space, or you can use LDAP, connect your DSpace to LDAP. LDAP will help you um, uh, mitigate, uh, I mean, work out who is allowed to do what on your DSpace. One word of caution, though, is uh, when you are working with uh, um, uh, items and you apply uh, these uh, permissions, you remove those read permissions, you have to go in, do it by uh, one by one, which means you can either do it by batch. So it's not usually retrogressive. So whatever you, you add in, if you make the changes later, the, the, the changes will only affect the future rather than the, 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 the past. So that's, that's one, one drawback. So it could be a bit of work on that. So to cap it all, yes, you can start a repository as closed and then open it later. But it depends on, again, how you want to move uh, across that. Can you change this space setting at any point of development? Yes, you can change uh, that. But one, as I said earlier, one thing you have to bear in mind, where it affects items within the repository, certain changes are not uh, uh, retrospective, so which means when you make the changes, they won't affect the items already in the space. So you have to change those on their own. Uh, it's only affect the ones that do come in. So for example, if you create a collection and you say this collection is private, if that collect that, at that point, everything that you add in will become private. But if the collection was open and you want to make it private, all the items in that collection that were already there will still continue to be open. Only the newer ones will take up the new uh, settings. So that, those are things that you need to be aware of. Okay. I think that, that I hope uh, I hope that is clear. Thank you. Uh, okay, adding yeah, to adding to Nathan point and Nathan's point, uh, you have to go. Okay, well, you, you know the repository should be a project or a program that uh, has a thought process in it. So <clears throat> once you 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 decide, I want to set up a repository then you'll have to take into account of very many other things, including uh, how uh, uh, you want the repository to be structured. Will it be open or closed or for how long? So you should have considered or you should be able to consider all those factors. Okay. Having said that, uh, uh, it's possible to do that, uh, but take note of uh, the fact that some of the uh, the features uh, may not take take effect progressively as Nathan had described. I just want to add one more thing uh, on how you can close, a, sort of do a hybrid of uh, closed uh, moving towards open. There's a feature called uh, embargo, and you can use embargo to hold uh, whatever items you don't want to be uh, available then to the date you want to them to be available. So you can set an embargo six months, three months, uh, seven months. That way you will not have problems with permission from close to open. You can set a date where you, are, you think by the time I get there, we'll have decided whether we want this to be open or closed. So that's one more feature that you can use and it will help you to do the transition as well. Thanks a lot. I hope this answers Yolanta's question. If not, you, you can type uh, uh, additional questions, Yolanta. And then uh, there was a question from Ian. Apart from the problematic Tomcat version, did anyone experience any other major breakages during upgrades Just try to put it on the whiteboard
can't put it on the whiteboard, but it's in the text chat. So who would like to start answering it? You mean the question from Ian, apart from Tomcat version, did anyone experience the breakage, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I've had problems with uh, Java. So uh, whatever Java that has been, uh, uh, the Java version or the J Java uh, option that you've been given, you must uh, have that as, because it's a prerequisite. Uh, some of the, some of the other problem with Java is the path, depending whether you are doing Windows or uh, Linux. If you don't set your path properly, you'll have problems when you are doing the, the building. So uh, the likely problems you're going to have is the uh, one with Java, and I've said about the version and the setting of the path, the home, home path. Uh, the other problem you could have is a lack of permission for the database, Postgres, in this case. So if you don't set up the permissions properly, you, that's one of the problems you might have when you are doing the last stage, when you're doing the ant. Uh, the uh, fresh install. Uh, apart from the database, uh, there are also problems with the uh, proxied uh, connections. If you have proxied connections, you need to set up the proxies for you to be able to get a successful connection because some of these dependents are gotten online. Actually, most of them are gotten online. So if the server is not able to connect to the internet without filtration uh, with with filtration i mean then it's not possible for it to do a complete build so you you also have problems with that those are the, some of the possible uh, problems that you might face when you are doing the installation and upgrade Would you like to add something to that, Nathan? I think you are still muted. Hello? OK. I, I should be on. Um, the, the the thing that uh, one thing I I I, I found was um, um, uh, DSpace six. Um, there are certain things that have changed in the in the way they do things. One is um, is on the database side. Um, now they use uh, as uh, uh, those who have done databases uh, with primary keys and 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 and. and you know, identifiers, they use um, the GUID uh, numbers. So to, in order to generate for the database, uh, for the database to generate that, they need, you need to enable crypto, um, uh, crypto, you, uh, let, me, let me just get it. Uh, it is in, in my notes. Uh, it's a PG crypto uh, extension that you need to install uh, or enable within your Postgres. That's one one area that you need you need to do. The other one that has changed also is um, um, in, in the earlier versions uh, we had a build uh, pro dot properties file, but now there is uh, a local dot cfg file. So so this one is much more better in that you can move the the, the you know the settings that normally change a lot into that area so that when when you build, you can just do do that much much easily. 
So that that those are the issues that I, I have encountered. The other one was I helped someone was was to do with the version of Marvin. Uh, although the instruction says uh, you can use um, any version 3.0.5, but it happens is that I think you need to use it. Uh, I'm not sure, but I can find that one out. Should be a 3.5 point something. Uh, that's the version that you need to build it with. Otherwise, uh, it fails to build. So yeah, basically that's that's what I that's what I found. So so in essence, if you have um, uh, you want to migrate uh, to upgrade again, um, if you are uh, if you are upgrading in situ, which means you are upgrading your disk space on the same box as the original one, then you need to yeah you need to be wary about uh, uh, up upgrading also the the other dependencies. Uh, these are the the the, the Postgres, the uh, the Marvin, and 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 uh, as Ivan has mentioned, also the Java, to suit uh, the new version. But for most upgrades, if you are running on um, uh, usually uh, virtual machines, um, the the advice usually is set up a new a new city a, a new disk space on one machine, and then just uh, migrate the database and the and the statistics and the configuration, and then just swap the swap the the IP addresses once you're ready. If you are doing it that way, then you might not suffer some of these problems. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, any other questions? In the slides that I'll share, there will be uh, our emails. Uh, and I think if uh, you have uh, any questions when you go through your updates processes, you can always email uh, Mason and Ivan and uh, I'm sure they'll be happy to answer your additional questions. So let's let's give a couple more minutes for people to type in questions if there are some questions left. And thanks again, Nathan and Yvonne, for being with us today. Uh, yes, I'll email you recording. Uh, it takes some time to generate a recording link, uh, so I'll probably email it to you tomorrow. Okay, okay. thank you. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thanks a lot, and thanks for attending this webinar. And have a good rest of the day and uh, Merry Christmas to those who will be celebrating. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.